Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking you through um, basically me driving around some roundabouts. Um, roundabouts is one of the most common things uh, that people um, just struggle with sometimes, and that's fine. There's a lot to think about. Um, and also on tests, it tends to be observation at roundabouts and lane discipline at roundabouts that now and again catch people out and you know might cause them to fail so what i thought would be good to do is just drive lots of roundabouts today some fairly quiet ones to begin with and then we'll uh, get to some busier ones and talk you through the basics of roundabouts so yeah hopefully you'll find it useful and interesting as always before we get started if you find this video interesting then please click the like button um, so that you're notified when we do a new video and also subscribe to our channel um, and uh, yeah it all helps other people find our videos so the first thing i'm going to talk about is our approach to roundabouts now we break it down as MSPSL, so a little bit like MSM, but just a little bit more in the manoeuvre part. So the first thing we do is you check your mirrors. Uh, depends on what way you're going, depends on what mirrors you check. We'll come back, come to that in a little bit more detail. Then you need to um, apply a signal if you need to. So if you're turning left or right, you would need to put on an appropriate signal. Then you need to think about your position. So do you need to choose the left lane, the right lane? Again, determined by what direction you wish to go. But you should be thinking about that nice and early before you approach the roundabout. Then you need to think about your speed. So how fast you're going. Are you going an appropriate speed to um, approach the roundabout with caution, but not have to stop? And again, we'll talk about that in a bit more detail. And then we need to look so we're actually out in a roundabout and you need to look. Where do we look? What are we looking for? How what we see helps us make some of our decisions. So that's MSPSL, which is mirror, signal, position, speed and look. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive some roundabouts. I'm going to talk you through everything I'm doing for the first few because uh, they're nice and quiet. So we're just going to talk about applying that MSPSL routine on approach. So at the roundabout ahead, we're going to do, just keep it nice and simple, we're going to do a left turn first exit. Uh, I'll talk about numbers of exits and how that can help you later, but uh, we're going to do a left turn first exit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my mirrors. So I check my centre mirror and I check my left mirror looking for any hazards on my left think about my signal so I'm going to apply a nice early left signal so people know where I'm going thinking about my position there are two lanes so I am selecting the left lane which is correct for the position I'm adjusting my speed and I'm having a look and it's clear so I can make my maneuver nice and easy now when it comes to adjusting speed you don't want to necessarily stop every single time so it's about judging what you can see and adjusting your speed so that you can make the right decision on whether it's safe to go or not. You may have to stop because obviously we give way to the right, but you don't necessarily have to stop. If it's clear, you can keep rolling. So we're going to go straight on second exit this roundabout. So I check my mirrors, centre left, I check my right as well just to make sure. I don't need to signal, it's a one lane roundabout so I'm just selecting a nice central entry slowed my speed down, had a nice look, look all around and signal to exit. So signaling to exit. If you notice once I was just past that first exit I applied my signal to say I was taking the next one. We don't want to do it too early because we don't want to confuse people and they might think we're going down the first exit. So this roundabout I'm going to go straight on second exit again. So I've checked my mirrors. I don't need to signal. It's wide, so it's two lanes. So I'll select my left lane, adjusting my speed. And I'm looking, assessing who's coming, nobody's coming. Keep to the left, pass the first exit, signal ready for the second. Okay, now let's do a right turn at the next roundabout. 
So what are we going to do differently? Mirrors are just the same. Different signal, so we're going to do a right signal. Position this time. Now I know this roundabout, so I know that it is wide enough to select left lane position or right lane. So I will be choosing the right lane. Again, just going to adjust my speed to make sure that I've got good opportunity to look and assess what's happening to make sure it's safe for me to go. And then I'm going to have a really good look and go. So, mirrors, signal, positioning myself to the right hand side into this right lane, having a really good look. Nobody's coming, so enter the roundabout. Now I'm going third exit, so that's one. That is two. Check my mirrors, change signal, position, and across. So again, if you notice, to change my signal to exit the roundabout, I did it just after that second exit because I knew I was taking the third. And most importantly, I checked my mirror to make sure that it was safe for me to move across and do the manoeuvre that I wished to do. There we go. So let's do another right turn. So mirrors, I'm not going to signal yet because of that road on my right. Mirrors, right signal, pick this right hand lane because that's the correct position, adjust my speed, nobody's coming, having a good look. Again, stick to the right, so that's exit one, exit two, mirror, signal, and across to take my third exit. Okay, so that's our basic principles. Um, obviously, I'll talk you through those every time I drive around about. But now let's talk about the importance of lane position. So I'm going to do a right turn. Check my mirrors, put my signal on, select right hand lane. So we're turning right. So we must, what I call, hug the roundabout. Really stick to this inside of the roundabout. Coming across, our danger is on our left because we were on the right. Now making sure that we maintain that right position is really important. It allows traffic to carry on on our left hand side if they are going straight ahead or even turning left on that first exit. And although we recommend you uh, carry out the diagonal rule, which is making sure that you're not ever alongside a car, people will sometimes come alongside you on roundabouts. Um, it's best not to if you can help it. Um, so we're going to do a right fourth exit on this roundabout. This is a lovely roundabout that has five. So again, thinking about that right lane position on the roundabout. So mirrors and signal, approaching in the right hand lane, have adjusting my speed, having a good look. I'm keeping to this lane on the roundabout, making sure that I've left that left lane nice and clear. So we've done two exits, we've done three, and I'm checking my mirror before adjusting my position to come across. Now if there was someone on my left, what would I do? I wouldn't do the manoeuvre because it would be it would be not be safe. So uh, and if you do try and come across and there's someone there on your test, you will fail. They will probably uh, either stop you from coming across or uh, you know if you do and you end up making the other vehicle change their position or make them break, then that is classed as a serious fault, so you would fail. So we're going to do a left turn. So nice mirror check, left signal, thinking left lane position, adjusting my speed, having a look, nice and clear, keeping my signal on because we're taking this first exit, and off. There you go, there's some left turns, right turns, a couple of straight ons. Now it's not very busy, so I haven't actually had to give way to anybody, I don't think yet. But we do have a red traffic light, so I'm adjusting my speed, so I'm checking my mirrors. There we go. So that is my husband behind me, so I'm trusting he will stop. And crossing's clear, and we're going. So this is what we thought would be good about these commentary videos. I'm not Obviously, I'm talking to you today, this video is about predominantly roundabouts, but as I'm driving, I can talk to you around uh, about what I'm doing, what I'm seeing, and the decisions I'm making 
um, about stuff other than roundabouts, which is good as well. So uh, we thought it'd be quite nice for you to see what we're thinking about and assessing when we're driving around. Okay, so we've got another roundabout. We can do a left turn first exit. So, check my mirrors. Nice early signal, let everybody know where I'm going. Adjusting my position to the left hand side. Checking my speed. Oh, someone coming, exciting. Didn't have to stop, but had to slow down to probably the slowest I've had to do. And we take this left exit. There we go. So some people ask about how do I know how slow to go? You've just got to make sure that you're allowing yourself time to assess everything that's happening on that roundabout. So you don't want to stop unnecessarily, but you don't want to approach too quick that you can't, you don't have time to notice people on the roundabout, people coming from other um, junctions on that roundabout. So it's important that you're going slow enough for you to be able to see what's going on and assess the situation, but not too slow that you're stopping the traffic from making progress. And it is a fine balance, and it's something that does come with experience. Um, and over time in your lessons, you'll find that you'll probably build that skill up um, as you're as you're going and even beyond passing your test it's some you know we're always learning we're always developing our driving skills so um, different situations will help us learn new ways and new things so you'll always be developing so we're going to make our way to some busier roundabouts now let's get on with it shall we hopefully um, not so easy for me just to glide on so we're going to go straight on second exit this roundabout so I'm checking my mirrors on approach. I check all of them just because I can. And I'm not signalling because I'm going straight on. Nice left lane position. Approaching. And so now I'm reading the traffic. I'm looking for signals. That car was stopping, the, the white car was stopping the blue car from coming. So it allowed me a safe gap to enter the roundabout. Now obviously I'm an experienced driver. I know how fast my car can pull away. So it's quite, you know, it's, it's a natural thing for me to assess a gap and just go when I think it's safe. You're not necessarily driving your instructor's car all the time if you're learning. So <clears throat> until you get used to the car, sometimes it's a bit tricky to know what's a safe gap. Um, but as I said, you know, that is something that you'll get, you'll get used to and uh, you'll develop that skill. And hopefully once you've passed your test and you've got your own car, you and your car will become one. Um, you and your car, you'll get used to what your car can do, how fast it can accelerate away, etc. So it's pretty boring, this next bit. So I'm not going to talk much other than... I can talk you through what I'm looking at if you want to. So uh, this road's nice and simple. Straight down the hill. I've got a school sign. It's a Sunday, it's closed. But you never know, might be doing something. So just being aware that there might be children, cars, extra traffic. Now I know there's a speed hump coming up and that sign's told me it's turned to a one-way system. So just adjusting my speed because I don't want to scrape my car on the speed hump. It's a funny junction this one. So you've got people coming in that they can only turn right up there. So I'm looking, I know that people are going to be approaching, I'm making sure well, I'm going to turn left at the end of the road, but making sure that there's no one there. This is quite a nice open junction. There's no one coming, so I'm going to carry on. So all the time you're scanning. You're seeing what's going on. I'm just checking my mirror because I've accelerated my speed. So I'm looking as far ahead as I can see as I'm driving. I'm looking for anything that makes me... Uh, need to make some decisions, so traffic lights, whatever. Oh, there we go, temporary traffic lights. Gotta love a temporary traffic light. So again, checking my mirror because I'm slowing down, making sure that I leave a nice safe distance between me and the car in the front. I can see his tyres on the tarmac. Now, I don't know how long I'm going to be sitting here, so I am going to pop my car into park. Obviously, if you were in a manual, you would select neutral and apply your handbrake to make sure it's nice and safe. Um, doesn't actually look like anybody's going. But there we go. Now one thing to be mindful of, we can see the traffic lights. 
we can see the sign saying that we're supposed to wait there. Probably my, well, my husband behind can see it. But the people further back, they might not realise that we're sitting at traffic lights. So they might try and come down the right hand side of us. You know, they might um, think that we're sitting here being a bit stupid. I don't know what they might think. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I am suppose I'm untrusting, but I never really trust that everybody's going to do what they should do. I'd rather be like that, I think, than think everybody's going to do it correctly. But we're... Uh, I'll just check my right mirror, just to make sure. Also, cyclists, you know, they they can, if they wish to, come alongside the right-hand side of us to get closer to the front or even the left. So just glancing in your mirrors now and again isn't a bad thing, just to keep an eye on what's going on, make sure that we're not going to hit anybody when we pull away. So the oncoming traffic's gone, so I'm anticipating getting ready for ours. So in my case, I've got my foot on the brake and then I'll be ready just to put it straight into drive. If you were in a manual, you'd be covering your clutch and we're off. There we go. So we certainly didn't hold anybody up pulling away. Again, you know, even though the traffic, traffic is controlled by lights, don't assume everybody's going to be well behaved. Just check that left mirror as you come back in. I was pretty sure there wouldn't be anybody there because I'd been checking already. So we're starting to enter a busier part of town now. A few more pedestrians. We're going to make our way to a few roundabouts. Just got one big traffic light system. Approaching a zebra crossing. So I'm scanning. I'm looking for people approaching. Checking my mirror. This car. Oh, she was quick. She was jogging. This car's turning right. So just going to wait for them. And we're going to turn right here. Oh, the road is closed. Don't know what for. So I'm stopping at this first white line because it's a cycle box. Again, I'm just going to pop it into park while we wait. We're not going to be too long, I should imagine. So lots of pedestrians starting to appear. Just making sure I'm aware of where they are. Nobody's waiting to cross at my at my crossing, so uh, at the moment I'm all good. I'm just going to get myself ready, check my mirrors, and I'm off. Now I can only turn right because the road's closed, but again, right mirror check and bring it round. There we go. Oh, it's a nice Subaru. So again, just scanning all the time as we're driving along. Where are the pedestrians? checking my mirrors, coming up to a junction, um, sorry, a pedestrian crossing. White lines have really faded on this road here, so uh, it might look like I'm driving in a funny position, but because there's permit parking on the left, there is two marked lanes, not that you can see the middle line anyway, but it's roughly to my right hand side. Again, just now and again, checking your mirrors, making sure you're aware of what's behind you, around you, scanning ahead. So, we're coming up to a roundabout. I am going to turn left, first exit. So, the first thing we do, check our mirrors. Got a bend on approach as well, that makes it nice. So, definitely going to check my mirrors a lot. Make sure there's no one coming there. I'm going to apply a signal, left lane position, adjust my speed. Now, this is a fairly decent busy roundabout, so I'm looking for the traffic. That person was going straight on in the right hand lane. There we go, nice safe gap. They're all going down there. And we're going down here. So again, mindful of the chevrons there. It's very interesting lane position. Um, or oh, sorry, very defined lane position. Don't want to cross over the chevrons if we can help it. We're going to go straight on second exit at this roundabout. So I've checked my mirrors. Positioned, don't need to signal, positioned myself to the left. It's not necessarily absolutely wide enough to, but you never know. There we go, just making sure we're all okay. Keep to the left, signal to exit. Okay. We've got a mini roundabout here and we're gonna go straight ahead, second exit, so. Mirrors, position, speed, or oh, sorry, mirrors, signal, speed, position, look. There we go. Now, you don't have to signal off a mini roundabout. 
it is not compulsory. Um, if you can, it doesn't hurt, but if you don't, it's absolutely fine as well. When you're going straight on, that is signaling to exit on a straight on. That car's turning right, lost my husband there for a bit. Catch me up. Come on, Matt. There we go. I'll ease off so he can catch me up. Lovely. Okay, so now coming up to another roundabout. I'm going to go straight on second exit. Very busy roundabout this. So check, definitely, you know, absolutely checking my mirrors. Thinking about my signal. Don't need to do it. Position to the left on approach to the roundabout. Speed. Having a good look. Now it's tricky this one. It's, you know, you don't get a good view. First exit, signal, second exit, and exit into the left lane. Now the next roundabout ahead, I'm gonna go straight on second exit. Now, my planning and judgment, I know immediately after this roundabout, I want to keep right. There is a turn left only lane and a keep right lane. Now I'm preparing myself because I know, because I live here, because, uh, I know that we can go straight on in both lanes. Obviously the lane positions tell me that, the lane markings, sorry. So I know it's okay to do that. So don't normally approach for a straight on in the right hand lane, but this time I am. Again, tricky this one. We're looking for signals on cars, their road positions, and lane positioning is really important off that roundabout. As you saw, that lovely lady was on my left hand side. And she wasn't doing the diagonal rule, she was directly alongside me. So I was just watching what she was doing, but she was all right, she stuck to her place, I stuck to mine. And that's, that's what's important. So as I said, because I was keeping right in the right-hand lane immediately after that roundabout, I went straight on in the right-hand lane because the lane markings told me that it was okay for me to do that. Okay, so just off these traffic lights, we've got another roundabout and we're gonna go straight on, second exit. So, checked my mirrors, don't need to signal. I'm already positioned in the left-hand lane. Slowing down, now this is a busy, fairly busy roundabout, as you can see, a bit busier, even though it's a Sunday, so I'm looking both of those cars have got left signals on, so I'm gonna to stick to the left-hand side just after that first exit signal to exit. There we go. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about um, what are we looking for when we're actually making that decision to go. So when I'm teaching, I often say to my pupils, if you can walk it, then you can drive it. And that's good if you're coming out of a junction or going across. Blimey, he was a bit unsteady there, wasn't he, bless him? He's trying his hardest. Boy on the bike, he's going no handsies, no handsies. Don't do that when you're driving. Um, a bit wobbly, he kept, it, he kept it in control and he was in the cycle lane, so that was all right. It's a funny road, this. It feels like a 40, but, well, it used to be a 40, apparently, but it's definitely a 30 signs everywhere so making sure I stick nicely to the limit so as I said when we're looking at roundabouts what are we looking for so obviously we're looking to make sure it's clear for us to enter the roundabout from the right we're looking for the cars that are already waiting at the roundabout what signals do they have on you know if we're watching them and they've got a left hand signal on they should be turning left a good thing to do is just to check the position of their wheels or where their car is pointing pointing that can often help us confirm that decision if they've got a right hand signal or no signal signal then we have to assume that they're going to be coming our way now that's not always the case we're going to turn left first exit at this roundabout so mirrors signal position to the left adjusting my speed having a nice look and there's no one to look at but that's all right take this first exit off. Straight away we're at another roundabout and we're going to go straight on second exit. So again, no signal required, left hand position. So this is a good roundabout to assess what people are doing now. 
That Range Rover left his left signal on. This car's turning right, so they're coming. The lorry's coming behind him with a right-hand signal on, so I know they're coming my way. That car is coming all the way around, hopefully, because that's what they're signaling to do. This car doesn't know where they're going. They're not doing any signal. This car's turning right, as is this one, as is this one. So at the moment, there's no, whoop, I could have gone then. They're turning right. Okay, now all those people that are going straight on, they were blocking that traffic, so that helped me out. And second exit, mirror signal just before we come across. So you're looking for the signals that the cars are giving, their lane position. So the car that came round, um, the, the dark grey car that had no signal on, that came around, the reason I kind of figured they were without a signal is because they were actually positioned very central on the roundabout. If you if you can remember, they had they were they weren't in the right hand lane, they weren't in the left hand lane, but they were over, well over the left hand lane, which made me think, are they um, no one at the crossing? Are they actually going to come round? And they did. That's why signals are important, people. Absolutely. It is a bit annoying when you're sitting waiting, and especially if you could have gone, if they'd have just told you what exit they were taking. It's quite annoying sometimes. So don't be that person that annoys others. Always use your signal. That was a good one. That was a straight on first exit. So there's only three exits off that roundabout. Now we're gonna go on the A14. We're gonna go on the dual carriageway, which is a left first exit. Yeah, so sometimes we're used to saying left first, straight on second, right third. It doesn't always work like that. Some roundabouts have more than three junctions. So um, uh, it could be a right fourth. Some roundabouts have less than four exits or three that we could take. Um, so it might be a straight on first or a right second. So that leads nicely into thinking about just building my speed up on the slip road because that's what it's for. Keeping to the left, checking my mirrors. I'm giving a signal, people. Check my blind spot. Drift across. I like the word waft. Waft across. There we go. 69 before the slip road's finished. That's good, wasn't it? So we're coming off the next exit. So I'm not, I don't want to make too much progress. I'm nearly doing the speed limit anyway mindful of my safety gap to the car in front. Definitely two seconds, if not three or four. So that leads me on to counting roundabouts, or oh, exits, sorry, counting the exits on roundabouts. So I'm just, just gonna exit off the A14. Okay, so some roundabouts don't have, as I said, the conventional 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock exits. So when you're receiving instructions or you're following a sat-nav, it's important to count your exits. So this roundabout is a, I'm gonna go right, which is a right turn, fourth exit. Now on these larger roundabouts as well, which is where you tend to find more exits, you can't necessarily see your exit until you're actually at it. So this is where counting comes in handy. So that was one, that was two, this is three. I know I'm taking four, so I mirror and I signal and I get across and I can't even see my exit. But I know I'm taking four, so I got across after three and there is my exit. So why is that safer to do that? Well, firstly, I was given the people that were waiting at the uh, junction, at waiting to give way to me then, the gentleman with the caravan, or I assume it's a gentleman. Um, I was giving him plenty of notice that I was gonna be turning left, so I was gonna cross his path. Also, I didn't get myself in a situation where I hadn't given myself enough time to move across, ready for my exit. Again, if you try and cross into the path of someone or move across when someone's there, that's a dangerous situation. You could cause an accident and it certainly would cause you to fail your test if you tried to carry out that manoeuvre. So this roundabout, we're gonna go left first exit. So, mirrors, signal, position, road markings say left turn only, good, I'm in the correct lane. 
speed is slowing down i'm having a good look i'm looking for indicators car positions and i've only got to worry about that red one which is not coming my way and we just carry on around now we're going to go back and do that roundabout from a different different way now so just moving across to the right and i'm going to go all the way around so actually i'm doing a right turn fourth exit so again this is where counting comes in handy so there's our one to Fornham. There's our two to Thetford. There's our three to Great Barton. And here is four. So at the third junction, signal will come across. Now, I've exited in the right-hand lane because, again, I know I'm going to be turning right. So this time I'm going to turn right, fourth exit, which is a bit weird. Fourth exit. So mirror signal i'm in the correct lane i'm adjusting my speed i'm looking okay so that is one looking for the chevrons that is two that exit is an exit it's on the three now i'm going four so there we go so that was a right turn fourth exit and that's again where counting comes in handy so next roundabout just building my speed up. It is a dual carriage road, it's got a nice long bend, continuous bend, so I don't want to go too fast. Next roundabout, we're going to be turning right. This is where I've got to count them in my head. Fifth exit to Newmarket. Fifth exit to Newmarket. So, right turn, fifth exit. So, mirrors, even though I checked before I came across, I'm going to check again, you never know. Signal. I'm in the correct lane, right hand lane, adjusting my speed, I'm looking, that red car wasn't signalling but its position kind of showed me it was going off there. So we've got one, it's a sugar factory, how sweet, um, two, we don't want that one, we want fifth, fifth exit, we've got traffic lights, good. I quite like red traffic lights on busy roundabouts. Give me time just to think. What am I doing? Where am I going? Am I in the correct lane? A lot of people are like, oh, red traffic light. I like red traffic lights. Time just to chill whilst being aware. Here we go. Amber, just quickly check my left mirror in case someone's come up the inside. So we've had two, that's three. The entrance to Tesco's is four and I very quickly want this exit so left signal and across timing's key there with that one because of the amount the junctions quite close together the exits so again using my slip road to build up speed du -du -du -du. blind spot signal and waft there we go so we're going to come off at the next exit Again, this is a big roundabout, national speed limit roundabout, so that's something else to consider. Your roundabouts in town, everybody should be sticking to 30, so they're going to be going 10, 20 miles an hour, you know. But on these bigger roundabouts that are national speed limit, they're coming from national speed limit roads, so they will probably be carrying a bit more speed onto the roundabout, so they might be going 30, 40 miles an hour. So, um, just being mindful that when we approach these busier, bigger roundabouts, people will be travelling faster. So therefore we need to just assess our safe gaps a little bit differently. So even while you're on a dual carriageway, still checking your mirrors. You never know. You never know. The things you might see. I saw a giant pink piggy bank on the back of a lorry once. It's very interesting. Giant pink piggy bank we'll afford it so we're taking this next exit so mirror and signal maintain my speed while I'm on the dual carriageway really important and use the slip road to decrease my speed now I'm going right in straight into the right hand lane checking my mirror before I do so and I'm going to be turning right fourth exit towards Brandon do like that name, Brandon. So, counting our exits, really important. 
maintaining lane discipline until you have to. So that was one. This is two. I'm making it very clear to everybody with my position and my signal where I am going. This is three. I can't see four, but I mirror, I signal, I come across early to make sure that these people in front of me and everybody behind me can see that I am taking this fourth exit. There we go. So really important to count, especially on those larger roundabouts. The, you know, the, sometimes they might have, as I said, they won't have the traditional left turn at nine o'clock of, you know, and straight on at 12 and right, um, right turn at three. So it's about where is that exit positioned? Is it before 12 o'clock, if it was a clock face, if it's after 12 o'clock? That determines whether it's left, right or straight on. And then what number exit is it? Tom Tom's, uh, or Tom Tom, other sat navs, all sat navs are really good at saying third exit, second exit. And on your test, that is how you will be instructed. And you should be instructed that by that, like that way, during your lessons as well. So uh, really important to count. And just, if you know you're going fourth exit, and you've gone past the third, get ready, get across, check your mirror, left signal, move across in readiness for that exit, even if you can't see it. You're not only giving yourself plenty of time to assess what's going on, but you're also giving others around you loads of loads of time to see what you are doing. Now we're gonna go straight on first exit. <gasps> straight on first, crazy, huh? It's because there isn't a left turn. So, uh, yeah. Oh, there's a red van between me and my husband. It's all right, we let him off. Again, so you can see from this sign as we approach, there's only two exits, straight on and right. And obviously three exits, including the one we're approaching on. We're gonna go straight on, first exit again. No need to signal. Pretty much a one lane entry. So looking, still keeping to the left. And even though there's no first exit, you should still signal to say that you're exiting the roundabout. You should definitely still signal. It's not a, you have to have an exit before to do a signal for a second. If it's the exit you're taking, unless it's a mini roundabout, you signal. So another roundabout here. Now this is a good one. So you've got left first, right second, right third. So let's do a right second. So mirrors, signal, position myself to the right. Now that white car did have a right signal on. Right, okay, so that's what I mean about looking and assessing. So that car did approach the roundabout with a right signal. It went off, but I clocked it checking my mirror and signaling before coming across. I clocked it before, so there's a part of me going, I think you're still gonna turn right, so I waited. So that's, you know, where signals, again, are important, but also where you having a nice early look, going in appropriate speed to assess before anything happens. Um, so you can make the safest decision for you and everybody else. But change the speed limit to 30, so just making sure I'm doing that. So coming up to another roundabout now, and this roundabout is uh, a little bit different. Oh, we've got someone at the pedestrian crossing. There we go, just make sure she's clear, because that's what we have to do, lovely. Okay, so this roundabout, we're gonna go straight on second exit. Fairly normal looking roundabout. However, if you just look on the left hand side right there, we have to go straight on in the right hand lane. Goes against everything we're taught, goes against everything the highway code says, but we do what we obey road signs and road markings. So we're going straight on from this right hand lane. So I'm not signalling really reading the traffic so looking for their lane position 
Blue van, if you can see, is quite close to, closer to the roundabout, so I assumed he was going round. I had a right signal on. Again, closer to the roundabout, but that looks like a nice gap for me, so I'm going. First exit, mirror signal, second exit. A little bit different because you have to try and come across. So, on approach to a roundabout, don't assume that it is going to be a normal left lane for straight on and left, right lane for turning right. You just never know. We've got a few roundabouts like that in Bury, uh, Bury St Edmunds, so it's something that we teach our pupils a lot. So if you're visiting a new town, just think, mm, I better just watch for road signs, road markings, all those kind of things to help us out. So that's about it for this video. Um, I hope I've covered off some good stuff about roundabouts. Um, I've quite enjoyed doing this style of video, really. It's quite fun, something a bit different. If you like it, please comment. We love to read all your comments and um, you know see what you guys are thinking. Um, and as always, you know, visit our channel. We've got over 150 tutorial videos. You can tell I'm used to saying that. Um, and I'm sure there'll be something uh, that will be helpful to someone. Uh, so again, thanks for watching and I uh, hope to see you soon. Bye.